Warning, do not try any of the stunts depicted in this video. This is for entertainment purposes only with no intention of promoting unsafe and potentially harmful behavior. Viewer's discretion is advised. This is Iceberg Alley in Newfoundland, Canada. Every spring, millions of tourists from around the world flock to witness the spectacle that occurs only once a year here in Newfoundland. These beasts of nature emerge from the northern Atlantic and garner widespread attention for their sheer size, beauty, and unpredictable nature. Not only are they a sight to behold, they are also used to create a special iceberg beer you can only find on the island. The breathtaking scenery, unique landscape, and friendly culture alone is enough to attract visitors to the island. But these icebergs are an absolute must-see attraction that you won't easily find elsewhere. And in this video, we decided to do something a bit outside of the box. With weeks of preparation, planning, and having every small measure accounted for, we took a road trip from upstate New York to not only look at this anomaly firsthand, but to do something almost unheard of. Mount one of these beasts and camp overnight. First order of business was getting to the island and getting situated. Yes, I'm on Ethan, yep. That's for correct. Yep. Dude, every time I try to get out of this RV, it's like it jams. Look at him, he has no idea. He has no idea, but I'm locked in. Dude, it's not bad. <laughs> All right, let's go. You ready? We have no idea where we're, oh. Right here? We're lost. Huh. We're lost. Go. The lounge bar casino. There's a freaking casino in here, man. There's a casino? <laughs> You want to blow all of our money on the first night? <laughs> so we just landed in Newfoundland an hour ago. Aside from some gas station and essential stores, the place is damn near barren. But by far, it's some of the nicest and most hospitable people I've ever met. Trust me, I'm a New Yorker. I'm looking around and I'm not seeing a lot of architecture. I'm not seeing a lot of building. It's all trees. It's all trees. After spending some time getting situated and meeting the locals, the time came for us to begin our hunt for the right iceberg. The northeast part of Newfoundland runs along Iceberg Alley, so there's no shortage of ice flowing through the island. Thanks to an app called Iceberg Finder, citizens who spot them can snap a picture and upload its coordinates to a website so other tourists can find them. This will make our job a lot easier. This is where we're supposed to be camping on. <laughs> and, uh, this is yeah. our campsite today. It's gonna be our campsite. Somehow we're supposed to pitch a tent for this thing. Look at all these icebergs though. We're going way off in the distance. Wow, dog. Yeah, we're oh, oh, yeah. Dude, I'm getting splashed like crazy. It's gonna be cool. We're gonna have to like be really dressed up. In the middle right there. It's a little crooked, but it'll be a nice view between the two giant ones, but it doesn't seem like you can actually mount it because it's too high up. Yeah, this is nice. I can see like a little one in there. Stop right there at that beach. And then hit one of those icebergs. What do you think? That's a, that's an option. That's an option. Yeah, right on the left side. We could probably park the kayak there or at least get in there and mm -hmm. mount it somehow. It's tough to tell how high up those little divots are from this distance. How would we stay warm in there though is the question? A lot of thermals, mm -hmm. a lot of insulation. That's all we really can do. We're idiots. After a couple days of searching, hours of driving, we were having no luck finding the right iceberg. We've had a few letdowns these last couple of days. We've had some equipment break. We've had a few setbacks. Our kayak snapped that we rented, so we're gonna have to figure that out. Just as it began to look hopeless, we came across Lobster Harbor and found an iceberg that looked promising. So that right there is the iceberg that we've opted to go for. Amar's trying to get a couple of precise measurements. It looks like that one right there is the most doable. We're probably gonna park right about here. Think we can do it? That's the plan. That's the plan. So the day before mounting the iceberg, we decided to visit the only city on the entire island for a special ceremony unique to Newfoundland. Ask anyone who lives here, they will tell you about a special ceremony called screeching. We have something called getting screeched in when you have babies or you get married. Say that again, it's called scre getting screeched in. Screeched in. This is, in a way, the rite of passage to becoming an honorary member of The Rock. This process includes reciting the locals' code, taking a shot of screeched liquor, and kissing a frozen cod. So, of course, we had to do it. You guys are from New York, right? Yep. Yes, we're from New York. I'm gonna get my little friend here out of the Oh, boy. I'm kind of nervous now. <laughs> Holy oh, smokes. This is him right here. Hard as a rock. Don't think about it too much. Don't think about it. I'm gonna say, is you a new for Screecher? And you're gonna say, indeed I is. Indeed I is. Meal cut. Meal cut. And long nay. And long nay. Your big jib. Your big jib. Drop. 
Drop. Drop. Okay, do you think you got it? No. A little bit? I'm we'll sorry. Do it. Indeed, I is. Indeed, I is. Me, Okai. Me, Okai. And Long Nay. And Long Nay. Your big jib. Your big jib. Drop. Drop. Indeed, Indeed I, I am. am. Me, Ling, drop. The Long Nay. Big jib. Dot. Drop. Drop. Yeah. Drop. Indeed, I is. Me, Okai. Drop. A long day. Your big jib. Drop. Your big jib. Drop. It's your new creature. Indeed, I is. Me, Ling, drop. A long day. Your big jib. Drop. There we go. Okay. That's screech. It's me, Ling, drop. It's gonna hit a little hard. That's easy. And you give my good friend your little peck on the lips. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yo, What's your name, by the way? I'm Grace. Thank Hello. you, Grace, for screeching us in. After we received our honorary certificates and enjoyed a night out in the city, we knew tomorrow was the day, so it was time to get focused. With our campsite determined, we just had a few factors to take into account. Number one, warmth. Temperatures were averaging about 38 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was downpouring frequently in Twillingate. Pair that with us spending close to 20 hours on a sheet of ice, that would get pretty cold. So we made sure we packed dry clothes to change into, an air mattress that would insulate us from the cold ice surface, sleeping bags, and a fire pit. Number two is getting on board. It's tough to tell from a distance, but the walls of icebergs can be stories high. We needed a method of mounting, so we came prepared with cleats and an anchor for the raft. Number three is transportation. As mentioned, we initially had a kayak, but we managed to break it, and with nobody renting out kayaks nearby, we were left with our backup plan. We brought with us an inflatable raft that was durable enough to support the weight of both of us, plus all of our supplies. And finally, number four, wildlife. Specifically, polar bears. It's not often you're going to find polar bears in Newfoundland, but they still tend to show up in the northern part of the island around this time of year. With only a can of bear spray at our disposal, we had to take proper precautions regarding where we used the bathroom and where we kept the food. And of course, we did our due diligence and tested the ice's durability and purity with a state-of-the-art taste test. All right, guys, so I just picked up this piece of iceberg that probably has traveled for thousands of years. They actually taste pretty nice, you know? I... <laughs> you just chew it. With all of that, among a few other factors taken into account, we were ready to get moving. We began lugging all of our equipment down a half mile trail that would eventually lead us to an abandoned beach. We planted a flag at the point of our departure to clip the carabiners to once the mission was complete. From there, we would assemble the raft, load the equipment, and start rowing towards the iceberg in the hopes of doing something almost unheard of. Floating next to this iceberg right now. Amar got up there. That's insane. Handed off equipment. We got everything off of the raft. I have to put the cleats on. It's difficult with just me and Amar, because I don't have a third guy recording every step of the way. I can only give you these updates, but we got ourselves fastened and we're gonna get on top of the sink. After wrestling the strong currents alongside of the iceberg for almost two hours, we finally got on top, which means it is finally time to set up camp. We are on top of the iceberg. I don't have any cleats, so I'm just kind of waddling right now. We did it. Hoping we don't meet any polar bears. The view is insane. I don't know if anyone in Newfoundland has done this. So, what are we celebrating, Mar? Celebrating starting this new venture of Orange Carabiner. We're celebrating getting on top of this iceberg finally. We're setting up a fire pit. We got our tent. We're gonna put on some dry clothes. And we're gonna have a fire. We'll talk soon, guys.
safe tomorrow, my man, and then we're out of this place. All right. Yeah, but I doubt a polar bear is gonna show up. I don't think we'll get eaten. Now we're gonna start cooking some food, relaxing a bit. It's been a long day. Some iceberg beer. Yeah, I forgot we had beer. Let's go. <laughs> Ramen noodles and beer. I'm so glad you brought that thing. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that. It just makes it feel like camp. Iceberg beer on the iceberg. So rewarding. On the iceberg, the peaceful iceberg, we're camping here tonight. Yo, you're the first person in history to perform a concert on an iceberg. Celebrate with some soup. I just might down the top of the human understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me. Alright, we're back in the tent. We just had a bunch of beer, a bunch of Raymond noodles, hot pockets, enjoy the fire, some music. We're hoping that the steaks don't give out that are fastening this tent then we slide back in the water, but we'll find out at some point in the middle of the night, probably. We're also hoping we don't get any wildlife or polar bears. Yeah, we were sure to walk far away and pee somewhere else. We set all of our food further away. We do have our bear spray, but those polar bears can be quite dangerous. So, we did about as many preventative measures as we could. There's only so much you can do. At this point, we're just gonna go to bed. That was a successful night. Honestly, we were having so many doubts about whether or not we'd even get on this iceberg. We had so many setbacks, so many, so many headaches and disappointing moments, but we made it. That's one of those things we'll never forget. But it is time to go to bed. Believe it or not, sleeping on an iceberg is actually Pretty comfortable, but today is our last day in Newfoundland, and I do miss my bet. So does Amar. So he's gonna go back to his family, I'm gonna go back to mine, but we're gonna have some cool stories to tell. This was rewarding. That iceberg over there, I don't know if you can see it, let me zoom. Right over there, way off in the distance. A big chunk of it just broke off into the water, and you just hear, boom, I thought like, I thought we were under attack. I thought Newfoundland got bombed. Nope. It's a big iceberg collapse. Those things are loud. Imagine that the iceberg just cracked right along this line. Split completely in half. Uh, but yeah, time to get changed. Time to pack up. Time to get back onto land. And that's it. And we're heading home. But unfortunately, we weren't out of the woods just yet. Right as we began planning our departure, the iceberg suddenly started to break down. If a large enough chunk breaks off and we're still on board, it could flip the iceberg entirely. So we had to act fast. The side's looking less and less stable. There's the beach there. Yeah, we're probably not launching from that side. All right, we gotta get out of here. We're a little too close to the edge, just flip down. As chunks continued to break off, we began to panic. We managed to find a good spot to dismount and Amar was able to board without issue. However, once it was my turn, we unfortunately lost a cleat, rendering me unable to dismount. So I was left with only one option. Right, I'm going out. We're up. Here. All that was left for us to do was to get back to the beach and finish the mission once and for all. What'd you do to the raft, bro? Oh, well, I kind of slipped off that iceberg and with my cleats I ended up <laughs> puncturing it. Well, we made it. We're back. There's our flag. Let's go hang the hardware. Just finished our chasing iceberg challenge. June 2023, 
that's my carabiner there. I just completed this challenge. So, first carabiner in. What you got there? We've been thinking about this. Oh yeah, it's not it's facing the right way. We've been thinking about this for the last couple of months. Let's hang it up. All right. It did it. Worth it, man. It was well worth it. We did it. Holy crap. Raft back in place. Losing air. Losing some air, but still going. We did it. We sure did it. As I record this voiceover in the safety of my home, I look back on what we just did and I can't help but feel this overwhelming sense of joy. Amar and I went on this trip as a couple of friends looking to experience a different part of the world, take on a unique challenge, make a few memories, and hopefully entertain you along the way. We understood the risk going in, and we were actually joking around about how we saw this in a way as our mini Everest moment. It almost felt like we freaking climbed the... Uh... Mount Everest or something. That was like Everest for us. The danger is very real. We all know it. Yet there's something there that fuels those decisions to begin with. It fuels those who skydive with the risk of a malfunctioning parachute. Those who free dive with the risk of drowning. Those who climb Everest with the risk of perishing before the summit. The desire to push beyond your limits and take that leap of faith all for the sake of simply saying that you did it. It's the desire to feel alive. Behind the doors of danger lie a sea of growth memories, and a foundation for something that will last you a lifetime. Now by all means be smart, use good judgment, and always, always, always be prepared. But we hope this video, this brand, can act as a reminder that there's an incredible world out there just waiting to be experienced. So please, stay safe, but get outside of your comfort zone, and go experience life. You never know when that ship might sail. That's about it, man. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, yep. share it with people who'll be into this. And this is the start of something real exciting. So, with that being said, have a nice day. Peace. <laughs>